supply chain disruption, titanium shortages, production grinding to a halt. Here's why. China is moving to tighten its grip on one of the most vital materials in modern industry, titanium. If Beijing ever enforces a full-scale export ban, Western industries could face a massive shock, bringing aerospace, defense, and, most worryingly, the robotics sector to a standstill. Titanium is the backbone of advanced manufacturing, found in everything from fighter jets to surgical implants. But the West's growing dependence on China for this resource has created a dangerous chokehold. Beijing has already used its dominance in rare earth metals as leverage, cutting off supplies in response to trade disputes. If titanium becomes the next target, the consequences could be devastating. How bad could it get? Let's break it down. Titanium isn't just another metal. It's stronger than steel, lighter than aluminum, and highly resistant to corrosion. Those properties make it indispensable for some of the world's most advanced technologies. In defense, the F-35 fighter jet, already one of the Pentagon's most expensive programs, relies on hundreds of titanium parts. The same goes for U.S. Navy submarines, missiles, spacecraft, and even body armor. A titanium cutoff would cripple Western military manufacturing. In robotics, titanium forms the structural core of high-end industrial machines. Without it, companies like Boston Dynamics, Tesla, and ABB would face production delays and skyrocketing costs. The entire effort to reshore manufacturing through automation could collapse overnight. Is this just speculation, or is Beijing actually preparing for a ban? That's where things get even more concerning. Automation has been the West's main solution to rising labor costs and workforce shortages. But without titanium, producing industrial robots becomes a logistical nightmare. A single robotic arm on an automotive assembly line requires materials that are both lightweight and extremely strong. And titanium still reigns supreme. If China halts exports, the West would face a double crisis. No titanium, no robots. And without robots, domestic manufacturing could grind to a halt. Could steel or aluminum replace titanium? Technically, yes, but each has major flaws. Steel is too heavy, reducing robot speed and increasing energy use. Aluminum is too weak under stress. In short, the West is stuck unless it can secure new sources of titanium. The global titanium network is a geopolitical minefield. China, Russia, and Kazakhstan together produce about 65% of the world's titanium. China alone accounts for roughly 35%, Russia 25%, and Kazakhstan around 5%, according to the International Titanium Association. These nations dominate not just extraction, but also the complex refining process needed for aerospace and defense-grade titanium. China's Baotai Group, the world's largest producer, supplies most of the titanium sponge exported to the West. Meanwhile, the United States produces less than 5% of the global supply and depends heavily on imports, with around 85% of the Pentagon's titanium sourced from abroad. If China imposes a ban, where could the West turn? The options are limited, and each comes with steep costs or complicated politics that make a quick transition nearly impossible. Japan's titanium sector, led by Toho Titanium and Osaka Titanium Technologies, is, you know, among the most advanced producing about 15% of the world's high-purity titanium sponge. However, Japan still depends on China and Russia for raw materials, creating a supply bottleneck. The Japan Titanium Society reports that Japan's annual output is around 40,000 metric tons, far less than China's 210,000. Shifting Western demand entirely to Japan could spike prices by as much as 40%, making industries like aerospace and robotics financially unsustainable. Worse still, Japan's producers are deeply tied into Chinese supply chains. If Beijing restricts exports, Japanese firms could face shortages or political pressure from Chinese regulators. That means Japan isn't a solution. It's just another fragile link in the chain. Africa holds vast titanium reserves across Mozambique, South Africa, and Kenya,
mainly in ilmenite ore deposits. But these regions also fall within China's sphere of influence. Through Belt and Road investments, Beijing has locked down exclusive mining rights across much of Africa. Chinese corporations, including the China National Nuclear Corporation and Lohman Billions Group, now control more than 70% of Mozambique's titanium mining projects. The MoMA Titanium Mine, Africa's largest, sends roughly 90% of its output to China for refinement into aerospace-grade titanium. Western companies like Tronox Holdings and Kenmare Resources do operate in Africa, but their production levels can't compensate for a Chinese export ban. Even if raw materials were available, China's dominance in refining ensures the titanium supply chain remains firmly under its control. So, why is titanium so crucial for robotics? It all comes down to its unmatched mix of strength, lightness, and corrosion resistance. These traits make it essential for high-performance industrial robots, AI-driven automation, and precise surgical robotic systems. Let's compare alternatives. Steel, aluminum, and carbon fiber each have serious trade-offs. Steel is too heavy, cutting efficiency. Aluminum lacks durability, driving up maintenance. Carbon fiber is costly, heat-sensitive, and difficult to scale. According to the International Federation of Robotics, global sales of industrial robots reached about 553,000 units in 2023, a 5% increase from the year before. China alone accounted for 52% of all installations. A titanium export ban would derail Western automation plans, forcing manufacturers to redesign machines from the ground up a process that could take years and cost billions in research and development. At present, no alternative material matches titanium's balance of performance and affordability. That's what makes any potential Chinese export restriction a direct threat to the future of Western automation and advanced manufacturing. When we zoom out, China's larger strategy becomes unmistakable. The nation has been steadily building full vertical integration across the robotic supply chain, controlling everything from rare earth elements to semiconductor manufacturing. Titanium is really the final missing link in Beijing's quest for complete technological dominance. The Made in China 2025 initiative aims to position China as the global leader in AI, robotics, and industrial automation. More than $150 billion has already been invested in domestic manufacturing subsidies. According to China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, these investments are accelerating the country's ability to dominate both production and supply, leaving Western economies increasingly dependent and exposed. Chinese robotics companies like CS Robot and Automation and DJI are rapidly expanding output, with plans to quadruple production by 2030. By restricting titanium exports, Beijing wouldn't just weaken Western competition. It would also push foreign robotics firms to set up operations inside China, effectively transferring intellectual property and technological leadership to Chinese soil. Western dependence on Chinese robotics exports has already reached a critical point. Companies such as ABB, KUKA, and Yaskawa are using more and more China-manufactured components in their systems. If Beijing decides to impose a titanium export ban, it wouldn't just disrupt production, it could redefine the future of the global robotics industry. Despite ongoing sanctions, Western aerospace giants like Airbus Boeing and Rolls-Royce have quietly continued sourcing Russian titanium through intermediaries in countries such as India, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates. Russia's titanium producer, VSMPO Avisma, supplies roughly one-third of the world's aerospace-grade titanium and has managed to bypass restrictions through re-export arrangements. Airbus CEO Guillaume Fourry has publicly urged the EU not to expand titanium sanctions, warning that cutting off Russian supplies could trigger a manufacturing crisis even worse than the global chip shortage. Boeing, which initially halted Russian titanium purchases in 2022, has reportedly sought indirect supply routes through Southeast Asia, according to Reuters. The truth is, 
Western aerospace firms simply can't afford to abandon Russian titanium, and that makes a potential Chinese ban even more dangerous. If both Moscow and Beijing restrict exports at once, there's no alternative supply large enough to prevent a collapse across multiple industries. So, technically, titanium can be recycled, but doing so on a large scale is, well, economically impractical. Unlike aluminum or steel, titanium requires high purity processing. Right now, only about 5% of titanium scrap is recycled globally. According to Titanium Metals Corporation, both the U.S. and Europe lack the necessary infrastructure to handle recycling at meaningful levels. Only a handful of facilities worldwide can refine aerospace-grade titanium. The Pentagon has been advocating for larger titanium stockpiles, yet current reserves would last only 12 to 18 months in a crisis, far too short for long-term security. A serious stockpiling effort should have started years ago. With a possible Chinese export ban looming, industry leaders now fear that the window for preparation is, you know, rapidly closing. The first and hardest hit sectors would be aerospace and defense. Aviation would face crippling delays and soaring costs. Airbus and Boeing, for example, source more than half of their titanium from China and Russia. Boeing's 787 Dreamliner alone uses over 14 metric tons of titanium in its airframe, landing gear, and engines. Any supply disruption could add billions in costs and delay production by up to five years. Defense manufacturers are equally exposed. Lockheed Martin's F-35 fighter jet, a key pillar of U.S. air superiority, is roughly 40% titanium by weight. Pentagon officials warn that without steady access to titanium, jet production could drop by 30% within two years, potentially weakening NATO's defense readiness. Since the U.S. currently imports about 85% of its titanium, it remains highly vulnerable to export controls from both China and Russia. The construction sector would also take a hit. Titanium is crucial for advanced alloys used in bridges, skyscrapers, and heavy industrial structures. Switching to steel or aluminum could raise material costs by 20 to 30 percent, forcing developers to either delay projects or absorb huge cost increases. Nuclear energy projects are especially sensitive. Titanium is vital for corrosion-resistant piping and cooling systems where other materials perform poorly. Analysts at Wood Mackenzie estimate that a prolonged shortage could add as much as $10 billion a year to global infrastructure costs. While aerospace and defense would suffer most, the ripple effects would spread through nearly every high-tech and infrastructure-dependent industry. Right now, the West's options are, well, extremely limited, and time is running short. The U.S. is exploring new titanium mining in Utah and Colorado, but environmental reviews and regulatory delays mean it could take more than a decade before production begins. Meanwhile, the European Union is negotiating titanium trade deals with India and Brazil, though those talks are still in early stages. Short-term strategies rely on partnerships with Japan and Australia, but even those cannot fully offset a Chinese ban. China, on the other hand, continues to tighten its grip. If Beijing enforces strict export controls, Western industries could face a supply chain meltdown with no immediate solution. Titanium is no longer just an industrial commodity. It has become a strategic weapon in the global struggle for technological and industrial dominance. The West is running out of time. And unless decisive action is taken soon, China could soon dictate the future of robotics, aerospace, and defense.